This is part three in a series of videos that I'm creating about how to control a model train using a Raspberry Pi or Arduino or similar microcontroller. This is also just as applicable to other motors such as those used in a Raspberry Pi powered robot for instance or, a, or an Arduino robot. And this one is going to be on PWM, pulse width modulation, used to control the speed of a motor. If you haven't seen my other videos and you're interested in them, part one covers electrical power supplies, looking at converting from AC to DC, and part two covers the use of a H-bridge to change the direction of a train by reversing the polarity of the power supply. Both those are linked in the description. Feel free to check those out first. But this one is going to look at motor control speed for the speed of a DC motor using PWM. How do we control speed? So if you think back to the standard model train controller we showed in part one, that has a variable knob. Um, as you turn that, that um, changes the voltage which is used to supply to the rail. The higher the voltage, the faster the motor goes and hence the faster the train goes. If we want to slow that down, then you do the opposite, turn it down, reduce the voltage and it goes slower. In a Raspberry Pi um, or an Arduino, it's not so easy to control a, a voltage level. Instead, we're going to look at PWM. So PWM takes a digital output and basically creates a varying DC voltage. Here's a waveform showing a PWM signal and it has the period that's on and a period that's off. The period it's on to the period it's off is the ratio of how much power is going to go. So if we've got, say we're switching a 12 volt circuit and we're only switching it on for half the time, it's going to be the equivalent of having six volts of power to that rail. If you have more on and less off, then you get a higher voltage and correspondingly, if you've got a shorter time on, then you actually have a lower voltage. In reality, the voltage is, is switching from high to low. But if you put on a load that um, isn't sensitive over such a short period of time, then it will just believe that it's, um, it's running at that lower voltage. In fact, when you're controlling a DC motor, it's actually advantageous to run it at full voltage for that short period of time. The reason being is that it brings the magnetic field on fully. And by doing so, you get don't get the, the jerky um, motion that you might get if you lowered the voltage and the magnetic field isn't quite enough to power the motor. So what you're getting is you're getting the motor pushing and then relaxing and then pushing and relaxing and because of the momentum um, it's all going to flow quite smoothly. On the Raspberry Pi you can create PWM, there's a, a hardware PWM on certain pins or you can use software PWM. The code uses GPIO0 and that's just going to use software based PWM to create that on and off period. On the Arduino, then you should look at using one of the PWM pins and they've got built-in hardware PWM and they take a lot of the load off the, the Arduino. Essentially, that's it. So you can take that PWM signal and use that into your H-bridge and that gives you both the motor control direction using the H-bridge and PWM. So you've got two outputs, one forward, one reverse. And if you apply PWM on there, then that's going to control the speed of the motor and hence the speed of the train. I hope you found that useful. So now we've got the circuit board fully up. Here we are, it mounted on a 3D printed board. So we've got the Raspberry Pi here. We've got the motor controller board. This is the L298N discussed in the previous video and then I've got a little breadboard that I can use for any other circuitry that I want to provide. I'll be creating another video about that at some other stage of how you can create those sort of boards but the again the, the files if you've got 3D printer are linked or 
you could just create this out of just a small piece of wood or plastic or anything you've got lying around just to place it all together. The next video is going to be on how we can control the train automatically. We're using code but we're having to manually tell it um, when to stop and when to start and things like that. So it's going to be automatically sensing the locomotive as it approaches the station and slowing the train down and speeding it back up again after it's had a chance to uh, offload and reload with new passengers. If you want to find out about the next video that comes out please subscribe to my channel and if you click the messages the bell icon you'll get a message when the video comes out please um, like and share the video or leave any comments below and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next installment